buenos dingas. Oh boy. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, last night was not fun. <coughs> uh, the kids were kind of sick and kept waking up. Like, one would wake up the other, and then the other would wake up the first, and then it was just a vicious cycle. Uh, but they're sick, and uh, I tried yelling at them a lot, and that didn't that didn't help their sickness at all. So, I figured I'd just be nicer. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> but as a side effect of that, I was awake and on and off working on, uh, <clears throat> the computer. And, uh, I got that, that Emacs thing, the OpenSCAD language thing working. I don't know, I guess technically it might be my first language, but it's just kind of a shorthand. So, I don't know, maybe it counts. Um. The syntax is somewhat changed, uh, significantly. Well, whatever. Uh, the point was, I started messing around with it and wanted to figure out uh, the right way to do it. And the idea in your head versus what actually makes sense is <laughs> are usually usually a little bit different. Uh, so <clears throat> the idea in my head was like typing commands directly into it and having it affect the uh, the output, but that's a lot harder to track than. Um, just having a buffer that you type your language into and then let your let Emacs process the language and then generate the expected open SCAD output and then dump that in a file so it, it works uh, obviously uh, but the idea is that it uh, it basically I mean, why wouldn't you want it to be an Emacs? Uh, you can set it up on a, a like a web browser or something. Well, I don't know. There's there's different types of different styles of input that you could do, um, <clears throat> but you know me, I'm I'm just gonna put it in Emacs anyways. Uh, I realized about halfway through that doing it in Python probably wouldn't lose. I probably wouldn't lose anything, um, but it was just more interesting to do it in <laughs> in Lisp. <laughs> Um, yeah, plus if I did it in Lisp, it could be entirely uh, folded into Emacs, which was kind of the, the point anyways. So you just open an empty buffer in Emacs, uh, and you start typing your code, or your, your pseudocode, it is code, it's your new language, whatever that new language is, into, uh, into that buffer. Then you hit a command key or run the, uh, the interactive function and it uh, <clears throat> it parses the parses the buffer that's on the screen uh, opens to a new buffer window a temporary buffer reads the input that you gave it in the buffer window generates the complete open SCAD uh, output and then saves that to a file and then whenever the file is changed, OpenSCAD's automatic preview updates each time. So functionally, you're just like, you, you open a, a buffer and type in C space one space two space three, and then hit the command, and then up pops your cube uh, that has, that is a one by two by three. And then you're in your, already in your text editor, so it's, it's nice and fluid to move around. Um, <clears throat> if you want to transpose it, you still have to do nesting, uh, you know, so your transposition is going to contain, uh, your cube, and obviously everything that I've done is a single letter, because why would you need more letters? <laughs> so, uh, getting to a transposed cube, you just T space 0 space 0 space 0, enter, C space 1 space 2 space 3, enter, and then to close the uh, transposition, I think it's TX, uh, or it's just X actually. That's right, because it that just closes, it terminates any open uh, previously opened brackets. So there's no like syntax checking or anything. So you need to keep track of you know what you're what you're opening and closing. Uh, but being able to just move those items 
around and in and out of the, the open transpositions and, uh, you know, you can indent with spaces just because it helps, but it helps visually, but uh, technically it doesn't really need to do anything. Uh, and then you can, for any code that's not that, that quick, that, <laughs> that quick uh, writing style, you just proceed it with a, <clears throat> proceed it with an at symbol. <clears throat> so then if you want to like, uh, specify a module or something like that, you just put at, at sign module, or if you want to define a variable, you can at sign var whatever equals whatever, end with a semicolon, and then move on from there. And then when the interpreter reaches anything that has, that starts with a, a semicolon or a at sign, it just discards the at sign and prints it directly into the into the output file. So there's a few other bits of potential like uh, making it so the input file can define what the output file is because right now it's fixed. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a pretty easy path to that uh, but just getting it done was was pretty cool. Also I had to uh, I had to flat all of the <laughs> the functions so I had to make everything nice and nice and compact and tight uh, because I wanted my function names to be very simple. Yeah. Yeah, that works well. Huh. I mean, it, if, you're basically just taking the input and then deciding what to do with it, but defining it as a, a tiny function that's uh, uh, temporarily generated while the document is processing is very neat. Uh, and you don't have a whole bunch of other nonsense of, you know, if it's a this, then make notes like that and then generate your output. You're not evaluating the... Uh, <clears throat> I mean, technically you kind of are. You're basically doing a case, uh, a case output, but... I don't know. <laughs> it's it's fine. And it works. And it's a lot faster. So yay. I'm going to uh to publish the initial version of it just because it's cool. Yeah. Like I said, very not sleep. A lot of bleh. not a lot of not a lot of sleep. Not a lot. Very sleepy, tired. Yep. Okay. <sighs> I, uh, <clears throat> I didn't mention yesterday, uh, but I was talking about the, you know, your, if your computer is a, uh, a game, a video game console where the manufacturer only wants you to be able to do certain things with it and uh, expressly disallows and <laughs> literally makes illegal uh, you modifying it <laughs> to do whatever you want with it. Um, I forgot to mention that there is a modern uh, console that it, that exists. Uh, console. There is a modern uh, Commodore 64 style 8-bit, yeah, 8-bit yeah, computer um, <clears throat> that is available on readily accessible hardware. The uh, Raspberry Pi can be loaded with something called Ichigo Jam, which uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you've probably heard me talk about it recently. Um, but I'm just uh, moderately enamored with this uh, super, super simple 8-bit system, uh, particularly because it, uh, it disables, it bypasses, it runs on the, uh, I'm going to have to take a closer look, but it's an extremely minimal version of whatever is necessary to run a Raspberry Pi. I, uh, I stopped short of saying there's no Linux kernel on it, because I think there must be, uh, unless he rewrote all of the, like, file handling, syst file system handling stuff and the I.O. stuff, which seems pretty redundant, but... It's extremely minimal. It's it's like 33 megs or something like that. Um, <clears throat> but if you put that on your uh, your SD card and load it up, your uh, 
your Raspberry Pi is now a, an 8-bit system that gives you full, full control over all memory access uh, and full control over the frame buffer, the, the video buffer. So you can, you know, make all kinds of mess in there. <laughs> and uh, modify your characters and do, do whatever, whatever, whatever it is you want. And that's running a uh, basic, which is neat, it's simple, very basic. <laughs> uh, I haven't gotten too too deep into it. It's I've messed around with it a little bit. It's cool, uh, but you still only get 124, 124, 1024K. Uh, I'm like 124 is not a computer number. Why are you saying that number? <laughs> uh, yeah, you get one kilobyte basically <clears throat> per memory space, and uh, I think you can chain them together. And I think there's over 10 uh, kilobytes, so maybe you know you can expand into it. But still, you know, you're you're just kind of messing around with something that's uh, uh, limited for the sake of being limited. It's really just kind of for people to mess around with and uh, use the I/O out on it. And if you are in <clears throat> if you're in Japan, you can order an actual Ichigo Jam uh, device. I think it's like 30 bucks or something like that. Um, and you can you can even get a kit that you can put together. And that's even more basic. Uh, and actually, that version does have a, a newer version of the basic. It's 1.4, uh, while the Raspberry Pi version is at 1.26 or something like that. So there are some features that do not exist. Uh, there is also a web version of it um, where you can mess around with it in a somewhat emulated fashion. Um, I'll link these in the description uh, along with some of my amazing meme art that I made doing something uh, using a, an image or a screen manipulation program that I, I wrote in about an hour. <clears throat> Goodness. <clears throat> so, uh, lots of cool stuff. Happy Friday. <laughs>